This is a presentation on the basic concepts of multiple regression and Pat will be at the Purdue University campus in Hammond, Indiana. Here's a set of learning objectives for this presentation and I begin here by showing the general form of the multiple regression model. Why is the dependent variable also referred to as the response variable. It is therefore the variable we seek to model or if you like the problem that we seek to study. The independent variables or explanatory variables in the model are the variables we believe uh, can tell us something about how Y behaves so to speak. So here, therefore, we're hypothesizing that Y is jointly related to all the independent variables that have been specified. So it is a joint hypothesis, and that's what makes this a multiple regression model. Now, in this respect, the beta coefficients that you see here determine the partial contributions of each of the X variables in the prediction of Y. In calculus, as I show here, these coefficients are called partial derivatives because they measure the change in y per unit change in the underlying explanatory variable holding the remaining explanatory variables constants. For example, b1 right here calculates the change in y per unit change in x1 holding the rest of the explanatory variables constants. In other words, we capture the individual impact that X1 has on Y without the interference of the rest of the um, independent variables. Now compare this to the two variable model which is also called a, a bivariate model because there are two variables that is. <laughs> so this is the simple linear regression model which we learned earlier. Here Y is a function of only one independent variable x. The coefficient b1 is the first derivative of the function as I show here and simply measures the change in y per unit change in x. There are no other variables to be held constant and so the, uh, the derivative is not partial, it's complete. Now the multiple regression model can also be represented in metrics form as I show here y is an n by 1 vector, x is an n by 1 matrix, b, the coefficients, uh, is a k by 1 vector, and uh, the error term is an n by 1 vector. So y as an n by 1 vector means it has n number of rows and one column. So the row argument comes first and then column after. So in this example of four observations, we have y as a, a 4 by 1 vector. Now though, um, in, the, in the case where we have three independent variables, uh, uh, the beta coefficient would have a four by, would be a 4 by 1 vector. And so x would actually in this example be a 4 by 4 matrix because if you think about it, this coefficient, this intercept here, is a coefficient of um, a of a column of ones, of a vector of ones. So if I want to be technical, I could insert ones right here. And so you see that um, the order of the uh, the matrix order of uh, the independent variables would be four by four, as in this example. Anyhow, continuing though, the method of least squares or ordinary least squares method (OLS) is the method that we're going to use to estimate the uh, regression coefficients. Now these unknown parameters, their estimates would be obtained by first specifying using samples and specifying the sample multiple regression model. And then we run a regression using the OLS method. The objective though is to obtain these estimates B0, B1 and the rest of them by minimizing the sum of the squared errors, the sum of the squared residuals. So the, this is the definition of the residuals. We learned this earlier in simple linear regression. Y hat is the uh, estimated regression equation, the prediction equation that is. So the OLS method would obtain these estimates B0, B1, B2 and the rest of them by minimizing the sum of the squared residuals and in that process is able to provide us 
with the best linear unbiased estimates, blue estimates, for these parameters that you see up there. And we hope, therefore, that they can be successfully used in a prediction equation given that uh, we have abided by um, for, uh, the assumptions of the um, least squares method for the most part. Now consider the three variable model, which is the dependent variable and two independent variables. This is the estimated regression equation. So here, B1 would measure the change in Y per unit change in X1, holding X2 constant. And likewise, B2 would measure the partial derivative of Y with respect to X2, holding X1 constant. So how do we obtain these parameters? Well, one important way is to use uh, uh, the metrics approach. And we begin by normalizing this regression equation, which is, first, summing both sides of the equation and then pre-multiplying each of the arguments by each of the independent variables. So first by x1, as you can see, and then by x2, as you can see here. All right, And then we form matrices, All right, as I show here. And continuing, we solve for the parameters, as I show here and here, All right, for b1 and b2. Anyhow, this discussion is outside of the scope of this presentation, and I just uh, show them here to uh, put a smile on your face. <laughs> All right, so these are the estimators for the unknown parameters. Now then, the test of significance in multiple regression is very important because there are two separate tests. The more important of the two is, a hi is the hypothesis test for the entire regression, and that's carried out using the F test. So in this test, we seek to determine if Y is jointly related to X1 and X2 combined. And therefore, the null hypothesis would be that B1 is equal to B2 is equal to 0. Basically, that both, para both coefficients are 0, because if both coefficients are 0, then Y isn't dependent um, on them. So now, the alternative hypothesis, be careful here, cannot be written as B1 not equal to B2 not equal to 0. No. One of three conditions would cause a violation of the error, would cause a rejection of the null hypothesis. The first is, if B1 is equal to 0, but B2 is not, we're still going to reject it. If B1 is not equal to 0, but B2 is equal to 0, we're going to still reject it. And finally, if both B1 and B2 are not equal to 0, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So as you can see, there is no way to mathematically represent that. And therefore, we would have to word it. An example is, at least one of the coefficients is not equal to 0. This is the F statistic. It's the ratio of mean square regression and measure of explained variation and the mean square error, a measure of the unexplained va variation of the regression model. Remember, mean square regression is sum of squares reg regression divided by k minus 1 degrees of freedom, where k is the number of parameters being estimated, b0, b1, and b2. In this example, k is 3. 3 minus 1 would be 2. And then mean square error is calculated as sum of squares error divided by n minus k degrees of freedom. n is the sample size. Now, here's an alternative uh, formula for calculating the F statistic, whereby R square is the coefficient of determination and measures the proportion of the variation in Y that has been explained by the regression. So in finding the critical value of f, we find them based on the degrees of freedom for the numerator, which is k minus 1, and the degrees of freedom for the denominator, which is n minus k. The second hypothesis test is for the individual parameters in the regression model. So we're going to separately test for the significance of b1 and b2. Remember, B1 is, gonna, is the measure of impact that X1 has on Y, holding X2 constants. 
B2 will capture how, how much information X2 contributes in the prediction of Y holding X1 constant. Accordingly, the null hypothesis for X1 is as shown. B1 is equal to 0 because if B1 is 0, then X1 has no impact on Y. And the alternative hypothesis is that B1 is not equal to 0. Similarly, the null hypothesis as to whether X2 contributes information in the prediction of Y would be that B2 is equal to 0, which would mean that X2 does not contribute information in the prediction of Y. And the alternative is that B2 is not equal to 0, meaning that X2 has no impact on Y. To test these two sets of hypotheses, we use the t-test. And the t-statistic would always be that is would always be the coefficient divided by its standard error for B1 and for B2. And this concludes this introductory presentation on the concepts of multiple regression.